Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Carcassonne Hunters and Gatherers is the first kind of spin-off from the Carcassonne series. This was released a long time ago and was widely considered kind of the best version of Carcassonne for a long time. Nowadays, we have the whole Around the World series they're doing, so we have a lot of variants since this. It was like the New World was released. I think the Castle was released. But when this was released, it was new, and it was widely considered the best. And some people still consider it the best version of Carcassonne, the Hunters and Gatherers. There's some new things kind of going on here. You have different types of animals that you can score, but if a tiger is there, it's negative, and you know, you're going to try to beat around that tiger. And there's a few other things going on when you got you got these lakes or rivers instead of roads, but a lot of it's very similar also. But just kind of know that this is considered probably one of the better versions. Unfortunately, this version didn't have a lot of expansions. So one thing, if I do play Carcassonne, which is never, let's be honest, I do like to add some of the other wrinkles in. And I think as I teach Carcassonne to my children, I'll, I'll stick with the base Carcassonne because I can add those wrinkles in as the game becomes a little flat. And I think the lack of expansions are going to play against Hunters and Gatherers. Now, if you're looking for, I just want a base set of Carcassonne, I'm never going to want any of the expansions, and I want something that kind of works. This is a pretty good version. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the artwork using this one. I know a lot of people are. It doesn't appeal to me. You take a look at it, and you decide on your own for that. If you don't want any expansions, and you don't want to be tempted by expansions, then this is probably one of the versions to get if you want something that's a little bit more pure Carcassonne. And I'm even comparing that to some of the newer stuff around the World Series, although some of those are really, really good compared to this. But you're going to have a self-contained well-regarded Carcassonne game. But if you decide that you want the expansions, then you would cross this one off your list. I don't think there's any reason to have this plus Carcassonne and a bunch of expansions. I don't think you'll play them enough. If you're just a Carcassonne nut and you want everything, well, then you already answered your question. You're going to get this. But for me, this is going to be a purge. And this is one of those circumstances where it's not being purged because it's a bad game. Quite the contrary. It's actually a very, very good game and a very good implementation of Carcassonne, but it's not going to fit into my collection. So this is one that while I can recommend, I just got to make some hard decisions about some games. I can't have 2,500 games sitting around here. Some of them have to go, and Carcassonne, Hunter, and Gathers is one of those that has to go because I chose to keep the expansions on the base game, and that's the version of Carcassonne that I'm going to keep. Carcassones, Hunters and Gatherers from Rio Grande Games. I'm not crazy about the artwork here. I kind of like what's going on. I just don't like the style. Your mileage may vary. When you open it up, you're going to have a scoring board. This is pretty normal for the old Carcassonne games. A rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few. You're going to get these different colors, just little meeples. You're going to get a little hut and a scoring mark. This is pretty common in what you'll get. You can see in here, you're going to have the different colors that you'll have. And then you're going to get a bunch of Carcassonne tiles. These are going to be different. This is a standalone, so it doesn't work with the other ones. But you can see the little artwork with the little animals on here. It's very cute. has a nugget right there, the water going through. And as always, always with Carcassonne, these are very thick and very nice. You can see some of the sides are a little bit different. But that's pretty much what you get. You just kind of stick them in here. You don't really need to bag them up or anything. The insert, no, no custom insert here. This is the old school way of presenting games. You just put plastic in there and that was it. So there you go. Here is a book for Carcassonne Hunters and Gatherers here on the front spot. You're going to see a description of the different tiles and the components are all listed out. Now when you open this up, it's going to fold out like so. You're going to have your goal and preparation, how to play the game, scoring, the rivers and forests, completing bonus cards, special tribe members, etc. And the rules will go through here and then the final scoring on the back. Not a whole lot of rules here. If you played Carcassonne, you can pick this up pretty quickly. This is still a very much an introductory game for most gamers. Hunters and Gatherers, rulebook, I had no problems with. Great job. So to start the game, you're going to put the volcano tile in the center. You will also shuffle up the tiles with the normal back. Then you will have the tiles with the bonuses that you will shuffle up also. So you have 78 of these, 12 of these, and one of the volcano. Then each person takes everything in their color. You're going to have the six workers and the two huts, and you are ready to play the game. The game is very easy on any given turn. You will be able to take a tile, draw it, and place it down. 
and you can either put a person or a hut out on the board. I'll explain the rules in this, but this is what you're going to do every single turn. Place a tile, and then you may place one of these out, whichever one you wanted, or none of them. So those are going to be your options on how to play the game. The remainder of the rules are all about scoring and how you want to win this game. So there are a few rules to placing these down. One, it cannot be diagonal. It has to be next to another one. And then it has to match up. In this case, the river is going this way. You could not place it like this. So I could place it like this. I could place it like this. I could not place it like this. Could not place it like that. So the sides all have to be able to match up. So that's the placement rules with the tiles. And as more and more of these come out, you can kind of see fairly obviously how you can place this. Now what is most beneficial to play, it may be a little different, but these are the placement rules. The sides have to match, and it has to be next to something. It cannot be diagonal like that. It has to be like this. So let's say you end up with a placement such as this. Remember on your turn, you can place either a hut or a meeple down. This is a may that you will have an option to do. Now you can only place it on the one you just played. So if I just played this, I could not place it over here. It would have to be the one I placed it. Now it has to be clear. You can't just throw it down here and pick later. So if I place it here on this forest, then he would be on the forest part of it. If I place it on the water, he'd be on the water. So you'd be very clear about where you're placing the person. If you're placing it on a meadow, then you would place it face down. But you need to be very clear and distinct where you're playing at where it would be standing up right here. A player, if, say they were playing something like this, they couldn't, if, like say on this person's turn he had placed it here in the meadow, then a competing person could not set it on the same meadow. Now, if they show, like maybe set it up like this and they're not yet connected and put it on the meadow, and then later on the game, they became connected, let's say something like this, uh, they became connected later on, uh, then that's fine, but they couldn't be placed where they were connected because they ha can't connect at the same time. So the way this works, let's say you had him here. Uh, completed rivers are going to work just like roads in the main game. If you never played the original Carcassonne, you're going to score a point for each one of these tiles that has the river connected to it. So in this case, you're going to count the tiles, one, two, and then one for each fish. You would score four points. There's a fish here, a fish here. And the connection is two. So one, two, three, four is how much you would get for that. Now, the same way the forest will, kind of like cities in the old one. So if I place this guy here and I'm placing this tile, that would complete that forest. I would get two points for each side. So this would be four points right here. Now, if you complete a forest as a gold nugget, which there is here, then you will get to draw from the bonus pile. You play one of these, and then you can put this down wherever you like. Once again, you can place a person or a hut on the location if I so chose. So let's say I put, let's say this wasn't here and I wanted to place uh, this, you know, let's say this wasn't here. So I wanted to place this, maybe I could place this here, for example, and I could put a person or a hut on it if so chosen. So the force are gonna work just like farms. If it ended up that you had multiple people, let's say you had something like maybe like this, where through gameplay, this was able to be here. This might not be a legal move, but just for example, there's three people here. Whoever has the most people would score the points. If it was a tie, then they would share the points equally for that. Now, if a river or a forest, like I just explained, or ever scored, then the person would get their meeple back and be able to use them again later in the game, just like roads and cities in the previous versions of the game. Now the huts work a little bit differently. They must be placed on river spaces. Only one hut can be on a river space. They will dominate that area. So anywhere these huts lead to, let's say a situation like this, then it would be all the way through here, up, and say that was there. Then it would continue on. So it would continue on as far as you can make the river go out. And that would be what these huts do. And that's, they get pressed right there. And everything that's connected would score for them at the end of the game. So at the end of the game, when all the tiles are placed, incomplete forest and rivers hold no value. The huts on the rivers and the hunters in the meadows remain on the playing area for final scoring. So the huts are going to score one point for every fish. In this case, it would have gone one, two, three for this example. So that hut would have scored three. So it behooves you to make that area as big as possible. 
Now, the people that you had in the meadows, they will score two points for each animal that is there. So you want to make as much, big an area as you can and score for these animals. You will get two points for each one. Now, the only difference are going to be this saber two tigers that you see here. If a saber two tiger is in a location, they will be able to eat some of the animals. For each tiger in the meadow, a deer is hunted and not scored. So in this case, where I normally would score two points for this deer, I wouldn't because a saber two tiger would be able to kill this deer, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to score any points for that. So this is a defensive mechanism that you can use to kind of screw over your opponents as the game goes on, so you can kill their points that they'll be using with the hunters. That's what these people would represent. And these bonus ones will do different things. For example, this is a fire, so he scares away all tigers. This is a mushroom, so each card with a mushroom adds two points to the scoring of the completed forest. And then there's a couple more listed in here. So you'll have this one, when a player plays a hunter on a sacred shrine, only he scores points for the animals, and each of these adds two points for the scoring of a hunter. So once you add up all those points, whoever has the most on the scoring track will be deemed the winner of the game. Who should buy this game? I would say this is for anybody who wants to play Carcassonne. And you know you're not going to want any of the expansions. It's a very particular person. If there's any chance that you would want some of the expansions to move in some of that extra stuff and be able to build off of it, then you're going to want to stick to base Carcassonne. But if you want, hey, I don't want all that stuff. I don't want all that garbage. I just want a base game of Carcassonne, and I want it to be good. Possibly the best I can get, but I want it to be pure. Then this is the one to get. The Hunters and Gatherers. I'm always surprised I didn't add more onto this, but I can understand like dividing into two roads. Now I'm doing expansions for Carcassonne and Hunters and Gatherers. It's probably something I sold a little bit. It was well regarded, but its day may have passed. I'm going to say that. It's going to be a very controversial statement because there are a lot of people who really like this game. But for me, it's not necessarily I'm purging it because it's a bad game. I'm purging it because it doesn't fit into the collection. I don't need that much Carcassonne because it's not a game I find myself going back to. There are a ton of tile laying games where there used to not be. Used to be this is where you would go. You'd go to Carcassonne for tile laying and there's some little things that would build off of that. Um, but nowadays there is a lot to choose from and it's not one I find myself going back to. So for me, it's going to be a perk. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching and everybody else keep playing.